Hi everyone, this is Simon and welcome to my video uh, covering the restoration of my 1978 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am uh, SE, Smokey and the Bandit Special Edition. Um, I bought this car five years ago from the US. I bought it off six fairly low res pictures. Uh, that was a huge, huge mistake. Um, the seller was obviously a very experienced seller at selling things that were maybe not as good as they look but looked better in pictures. Uh, as you'll see as I start showing the restoration process the car was really bad. There were, I mean the engine was seized solid, there was rust in pretty much every panel, the dashboard was cracked, most of the interior was destroyed. Uh, I've done my best to save what I can um, but most of it was just rubbish um, frankly uh, it cost me a lot of time and a lot of money uh, the total restoration time was about four years in total it took so long because I got ill at one point um, and I, I wasn't well for a while and it's taken me a while to recover from that so that that slowed things down but I've done my best so let's let's talk about what the video you're going to watch is so a lot of it is still photos over the last four years there's a few little videos thrown in there but I'll try and explain how I've covered the main parts of the restoration um, and how things progressed and where I got help so I welded the new floor pans in but I got a professional welder to help me with these bits around the t-tops because they were they were quite difficult and there's a couple of bits on the flank and I think a small bit on the wing that I just couldn't do myself I also decided that I'd have to buy a crate full of spares so I did bring a whole crate full of spares over and the previous doors on this car were so bad I had to put new doors on it the bonnet was so bad I had to put a new bonnet um, I had to bring a whole a whole crate um, of stuff it must have been probably about fifteen thousand dollars worth when I brought it all across um, the I think the lesson to be learned here is never never buy a car unless somebody's seen it for you do not buy off pictures no matter who the buyer is no matter how famous they are in the Trans Am world Mm -mm -mm. only buy it if you've actually seen the car or you've had one of your friends look at it or somebody you know you know you save yourself a lot of grief so this took me so much time to get this car and it's, it's not quite finished now there's still a few little things I'm working on but it is drivable uh, I drove it in 2019 which was last year it's 2020 now hence why I'm in the garage not out anywhere for obvious reasons um, and hence why I've got the time to make this video I suppose so sit back watch the watch the pictures there's a few videos in there um, and towards the end I think there's a few driving clips that I can add in and I'll try and show some of the costs and some of the things I did this isn't a how-to I'm not going to tell you how to restore a Trans Am I'm just going to show you the story of how I restored mine how it happened what took the time what frustrated me what what cost a lot of money you know thing li little gotchas that, that that are difficult to find so sit back pull up a beer or a coffee and um, I'll see you at the end so the car turned up on the trailer and it was pretty bad um, some of this rust I was not expecting I didn't see it in the original photos it was there but I didn't see it and every time I dug in things just kept getting more and more scary um, I found that a lot of the engine bay some of it had been out and put back most of it was there so this was something good to see. Um, the gold paint had obviously faded off the dashboard, but when I moved the radial tune suspension sticker, I could see underneath there was some gold because obviously the SEs had a gold dashboard. And remember, the only way you can tell an SE is from the documentation and the gold accents. But there's lots of fakes out there where people have added the gold on afterwards. So it was great to see that underneath one of the badges, there was gold. Um, it, you know, this, this is a legit SE and it was good to see this on there so yeah cracked dashboard it's expensive and difficult of course you need a new dashboard you can't repair it I started to strip the interior out straight away found that all the floors were completely rusted the whole lot um, in a video later on I say that oh it's not that bad but actually I ended up replacing pretty much the whole floor because most of it was not was not great original parcel shelf and, and sound deadening that actually went back in there's the original Pontiac historic services document or rather the bill of sale um, there's the original carpet actually that's still in the car I was quite pleased to use the original carpet original door cars you can see that's been eaten by a mouse 
that original door card is back in. I stripped out all the headlining um, so I could get to the T-tops to take them out. There's the original headlining that went in the bin. That was so rotten it couldn't be reused. My friend Matt, he helped me a lot in the early days. He's a serving police officer and works shifts, so he's very busy and very, very happy he helped me. Lots of rat's nests. Oh, man, how many rat's nests? Also found a fire ant in there alive, managed to squish it. So we started stripping down from the top, got the front off, got the seats out. Got into the core panel, those horns were completely rusted, which was a pain. Um, yeah, the radiator I didn't reuse, I've put a thicker radiator in. There's a little bit of accident damage on the car here, it's had a bit of a crunch at the front, we could see. Um, there's a chassis leg going in all bad yeah this was this was quite depressing work really finding all the problems um although to be fair at the time i quite enjoyed it um just looking back it was it was a, bit, a little bit depressing so yeah there's the front core panel now we're going to look at the engine build it's probably best to cut this up into chunks so we can get through it so every time i go to make a video it always comes out sounding depressing even though i'm not depressed so i thought i'd make another video now so that's the uh Manual transmit, uh, auto transmission out, and the Pontiac V8, the 6.6. .6. Serial numbers look good, and just to check it hasn't been overstamped. Um, there's the two X's there that shows this is one of the better blocks that came in in '78. It's a bit stronger. It all looks good. Um, I'm really pleased to see all this gunky nastiness because although everything has clearly been off the engine and put back. This hasn't been messed with. If this engine was terminally goosed, I very much doubt this would be like this. This would be disturbed. This is all sort of gunky and not been messed with. Um, although it could still be knackered, but, you know, that's a good sign. Um, so what I found also was the transmission oil. It was a nice sort of ready colour, so that's not been replaced either. And out of the sump, loads of black engine oil, so it's not been not been messed with that I can see so that's that that's a good start so yes yeah, starting to strip the engine down is extremely dirty as you can see um, full of gunk but as I said in the video it was kind of a good thing it showed it hadn't been messed with it was seized in place it was clearly left all the oil kind of evaporated um, started to take it all to bits I was really pleased I actually managed to unseize it to be honest I didn't think it was going to come to bits yes who's the daddy oh yes Watch this. I was pretty pleased at the time, as you can see. It's nice to have something good happen. I only gone and unseized it. Who's the daddy? Look at that. So I'd soaked the doors. Oh, in. yes. I'd soaked the, door, what the doors result. in diesel. Spent a lot of time rocking it gently because I didn't want to break anything. So I'd strip the engine down at this point. Brought myself a parts cleaner. Um, fairly cheap one. Uh, you can see there... Uh, I started to label the pieces and take them all off, separate the heads out, put stuff in bags. Um, this was relatively good to do. The sump came off, full of black gunk. Um, this was a, this was a nice job actually. Yeah, there's all the stuff getting ready for the machine shop. It's keen to get everything off to the machine shop. Pistons there, they were placed replaced with Keith Black pistons. They went in the bin. Um, there's the crank and the cam. The cam was knackered, but the crank was serviceable. I was rather dirty at the end of this, as you can see. Rochester Carburetor, we'll discuss that later on. That was a disappointing pain. There's all the bits at the machine shop, going into the machine shop. That's outside the lot of the machine shop. There's the heads, uh, the caps, crank, end plate. So I paid to have the, the block sonic cleaned and crack tested uh, and all kinds of bits that I paid for with the, with the block. Um, it was rebored. Um, and then here we jump back to me at home cleaning all the bits. I my friend Matt, I gave him a, a thing of cause, um, just as a thanks. It didn't cover any of his time, obviously. There's the original rocker covers. You'll see them again later. Um, there they go. That, that was a, a nice little job in the monks with the hardness. Now, at this point, I was getting a bit depressed because the car was never going to run. So I bought myself a Pontiac Catalina from the States at the same time. It was a great car to smoke around. I got it MOT'd and I drove it around that summer, actually. And the profit I made on selling it, there's me cleaning the seats in it. The profit I made on selling it paid for the spray job on the Trans Am. So it actually worked out. Yeah, quite a bit of money in there. I also found social security records and criminal records in there from the from the guy who's in jail now that owned it in the States. Yeah, then my, then my roof sprang a leak on my garage, which was great. So I had to stop and I had to 
So the, the engine bits have all arrived. This is really very exciting. Um, we've got uh, the Field Pro gaskets, smelling oil pumps. Um, we've got our our Hastings Molly piston rings. We've got um, Engine Pro timing kits. We've got um, freeze plugs. We've got Durabond. What's that? Oh, that's uh, cam bearings. We've got push rods. We've got inner springs, outer springs, engine bearings. That's our um, 068 grind camshaft, the Ram Air camshaft. Um, that's outer springs. Keith Black um, pistons. 30 thou overbore high compression pistons. Um, should give me about a 9 and a bit to 1 ratio. Wow, it's all here. Um, a thousand dollars that came to and I had to pay 170 pounds duty taxes and all the rest of it so for about six or seven hundred quid I've got a total and complete engine rebuild I've got everything in here there's even like a new oil pump drive uh, stem seal it's a really complete kit I think Clegg have done me really well there um, even with the import duty that's still a real bargain result yeah so unfortunately some of the bits came through damaged um, here's the followers. Look at them. They're terrible. Um, pistons. I, I, I had the machine shop put the pistons onto the onto the uh, the rods. There's the Edelbrock, uh, the new the new tray. Now back at the machine shop picking everything up. There's the block. There's it's all cleaned, crack tested fine. There was no cracks. There was no problems. Took it all home, which was great. Um, I had everything balanced, obviously. Um, had to buy myself a massive tap and die set because I was unable to tap and die some of the threadways. Um, there's my hearse in the background that I also had, although that's now sold. You can see me building it on the cradle. There I am testing the rings. Um, I'll talk about the Keith Black rings in a minute. It's critically important to get the clearance right or your engine will seize. I think I cover that in a video in a minute. I found that they'd unfortunately made the, um, they put the pistons on the, 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 the rods the wrong way round. And here I am looking at the information and I went back to the machine shop and they apologized and Hi fixed Bruce, it. Thanks a lot for taking interest in my post. Um, I should say the machine shop I've used, um, they've helped me before. They've built a lot of engines. They also build drag race engines. Um, this is in my, my nitrous hearse. They've built this for me and I've run that a few seasons and it's not blown up. I've never had any problems with them before. But here's my thing. So they've, they've done the block for me and I've, um, I've internal mic'd this up and double checked it. It's absolutely spot on to what it should be for a 30 thou overbore. I've gapped my rings, that's all fine. Now here's, here's my problem. This is, because I've got Keith Black um, pistons and I know they have a big gap and I filed them bigger etc. This is the, the Pontiac engine pattern, there we go, Pontiac 400. And you can see the, the sort of cutouts for the valves are on the inside and the quench area is on the outside. And it says front. So if I put this on top of my block, this is how my piston should look with the cutouts. Now, the book I'm using here for reference is this Rebuild Pontiac V8. Now, what it says here in this step is orient pistons and rods. And there's a sort of cap chapter here about, you can pause it there if you want to read what that says. But at the bottom it says, um, um, an easy way to differentiate, differentiate proper, proper rod orientation is to use the bearing notches. They should always face towards the camshaft during proper installation. So, logically, so I've had my, my um, entire running gear dynamically balanced. So there's, these are in ones and twos. It's a V8. It's balanced down the middle. I've got my, um, my reground and rebalance crank there and all my pulleys and flywheels and stuff. So if we look at these at number one, we look at the bearing the bearing gap there is no bearing thing there and the bearing you can see it there so according to those instructions this should always face the crank sorry not the crank the cam the camshaft so that is now orientated correctly according to the book that the bearing gap there is facing the cam but look the cutout is on the wrong side so I think this piston has been put on the wrong way round because if you look at that gap goes in there so that I set one at all like that look at set two you can see that's the bearing thing if that was in there like that spot on perfect that's exactly where the cutout and the quench should be I've also measured them with the um, with a micrometer and they're all um, nine I think nine nine seven um, so yeah there's no there's no problem and I could, it's just that what worried me was some of them like this one there's some of them have this sort of circular lip circular lip on 
but some of them that circular lip's been taken off. However, the overall diameter of this is still 997, so that's not been taken below the amount. So I think the only problem possibly I've got is that the pistons are on the wrong way round on these ones. I don't know why they've done that. I think they've made a mistake. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was odd that some have this lip left on and some have had it machined off. Now, obviously it's been balanced, so I, I know they have to take some, 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 some meat off when they balance it, but I wonder if they've taken it off the right place or if this lip, this lip is necessary to meet on the crank or not. So that's, see that one, it's been machined off. That's not on either side, there isn't a lip on this one, either side. Turns out I was right. The, uh, the pistons were on the wrong way around, but everything else was fine. So I um, took them back to the machine shop, had a very delicate conversation with the guy because um, he's very proud of his work and he fixed it. This is me drilling a hole in one of the core plugs. So it sprays oil on the distributor shaft. This is like a little hack that you're supposed to do. Um, I am cleaning up the, uh, the, the rockers and the followers and the buckets. Um, using petrol here to wash off the machine shop's um, coating. Um, and then putting my own uh, compound on there because they were coated for the machine shop and you shouldn't leave that on. You should remove that with petrol and then you should put your, your own protection on. Here I am measuring crank end float and it was absolutely spot on. Hey everyone, here in the garage looking at the um, Pontiac 400 I'm building. I've built lots of Jag engines, well a couple of Jag engines before the one in the hearse I rebuilt and Done Don't I look young? On my S -type. And the, um, this is American V8, so it's much, much, much more simpler than the Jag engines. So you've got um, a single timing chain, there's not dual overhead cams, it's push rod, it's generally a fairly simple engine. But things are different, and I wanted to make sure I got it right. Another sort of thing to make things more difficult was I brought these Keith Black pistons. Now, these pistons are not the same as a normal piston. Uh, you can see here these are plus 30 thou, but standard, that just means the bore's a bit bigger. But these pistons have a different ring gap, because this top ring, the compression ring at the top, um, is actually higher up on the piston, so it gets hotter, and it needs to have a bigger expansion gap. And the second ring is, is similar. So you often hear people saying, oh, my Keith Black pistons blew up. Well, it's obvious to see why people do have their pistons blow up, because... You have to kind of do a, a ring gap end factor and you have to sort of do an equation to work out what it was. Now, I don't have the most accurate measuring stuff. I mean, I've got a bore gauge here to measure the inside of the bores and I've got micrometers, but I didn't have one big enough to measure the pistons properly. So I went to see my good friend Paul and he sort of double checked all my measurements and it seems that actually everything is okay. But the thing is with these key flat pistons, and these are my rings, this is for cylinder number six, these rings. So, normal, often with rings, when you put them on the pistons, you don't need to file the you don't you don't need to file the gap bigger, because if you look at one of these rings, like this one, when the ring sits in the bore here, as it gets hotter, that gap gets smaller and closes up. So it's really important that that gap is not too small. Of course, if it's too big on an oil ring, you'll you'll burn oil or on the compression ring you'll get blow by so you don't want the gas coming out from the bang and you don't want the oil coming from the lubrication but this is the thing so these are the rings that Keith Black recommends or one of the one of the rings is the Hastings ring set these are molly coated I went for here just all molly coated means is they have this little this little molly molly denim sort of coating in here to make them a bit tougher um, anyway these normally are gapped correctly ish and but if you use Keith Black pistons the gap is wrong and the gap is wrong by not just a little bit but quite a lot so when I gapped these rings these are at 20 thou of an inch approximately 1920 here but using Keith Black's equation for what they should be for a standard car they're at least five or six thou too small now that's critical because if this expands and it's too small, it will bind in the cylinder and you get big, big problems. And my, my friend in Finland said he knew a chap who was running a, a, a nitrous car. And we can see here that if you run a nitrous car, the gap should be absolutely enormous. So if the guy used the standard gap for his car, you can see why it seized. 
So I can see why there's some worry about these Keith Black pistons, but I can also see that if you don't check the rings and you don't want to use the size that Pontiac recommend in the Haynes manual or in any, any of the literature, you need to use the size that Keith Black recommends. So I can see how people are getting it wrong. Sort of an interesting, interesting thing that I sort of discovered today. But anyway, um, I've double checked all the measurements from the machine shop. The bores are spot on. The pistons are all the right size. My ring gap measuring is accurate. I now need to file open all these ring gaps bigger. These oil control rings are fine because they need to be a minimum of 16 and they're all within tolerance for the, the second, sorry, the second ring, not, 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 not the oil ring. So yeah, it's all go. I hope to be putting, uh, I need to file this down, put the pistons on the rings, put the pistons in and then we can start putting the crank in and start moving on. But it's been a, it's been a long old journey. I had to see my friend Paul and get him to give me a bit of a hand, but yeah, it's getting there. And the spoiler is it was fine. I've covered over a thousand miles in it and it's running really well. It pulls beautifully. So here I am using oven cleaner to get some of the ugh, horrible stuff, dried oil off this stuff. Uh, I had to buy myself a piston ring compressor thing to get the piston rings on. I was terrified I'd break one. I didn't in the end. There you can see the crank in. And the lube on the, uh, on the bore ends, on the little ends. There's me with the petrol again, wiping the protective cover off. And then lubing it up with the, the, the graphite building compound, which is critical. Uh, there's Matt with the other ring compressor so we can get the pistons in the bores. I was getting a terrified I'd snap a ring, but we didn't. We got them all in. Thanks to Matt for his help on this. Everything went together pretty well. We kept it in a bag when it wasn't being used. You can see I've got the oil dipstick in there and I've got the core plugs. That is the fuel pump. That was, I think, reused. I don't think I got a new one. Cleaned it up in my parts washer. Best thing I ever bought, that parts washer. Brilliant um there is some miscellaneous bits <laughs> i can't remember what they are there is the timing mark um i also brought myself a shop blaster and i started doing some shop blasting at home there we go i shop blasted that myself um and then that got painted in gm corporate blue which we'll see later there's the dreaded rochester that i ugh, i don't even want to talk about it there's all the pulleys that i shop blasted myself um they all got painted up black uh so the machine shop refaced the valves they were perfectly serviceable really good nick um and here they are this is the crack testing from the machine shop when they were just proving that everything was okay um there's some photos there back on my bench after the crack testing um they were obviously crack tested before the work was done on them uh this is me looking at the different parts in the head gasket set i brought a full gasket set i had to remove the baffle out of the sump actually i had to cut it out to clean all this all the horrible stuff out and then i re-welded it back in because i wasn't happy that it was clean enough i'd spent so much money on this gentlemen the crank is in spins lovely look at that it's all top down nice free movement no contact nice and three so these are all tightened down to 100 and those are at 120 and she's in and that's just perfect no drag goes around lovely I then took it to a Robin in the Pontiac Owners Club who put in for me the valve stem seals. Um, thanks for that, Robin. Uh, I then fitted the valves. Um, and here's all the uh, the bolts that get torqued down. The head bolts. There we go. Cleaned up. I can't remember if they're going wet or dry. It says in the book, and I did whatever they said in the book, but I cleaned them all up. Tapping the core plugs in. I had one core plug that leaked, actually, when I did fire the engine up. The rest were okay. Uh, you can see there, so this took a long time because I checked everything and made sure it was right and I then had to get this, uh, yeah this was annoying, this was the the uh, end part, oh the stupid Rochester again, I spent so much time on this and ended up binning it, valves ready to go in, those are the bits we saw covered in oven cleaner earlier, they're now clean and greased up, valves are in with stem seals, there's the rockers and the followers and the springs all in. You see the 6X there on the head. This is me measuring piston height to make sure we're not going to have any clashes. That's the oil strainer going on. Oil pump, obviously brought new oil pump. And I think I welded the strainer on. I was told someone told me to do that. There's a timing gear, so much, so much simpler than the Jaguar ones I'm used to. And here's me um, tightening up the head gasket, putting the heads on. 
uh, sorting out the timing marks. Hopefully I'm going to zoom in and show some of the timing marks. Nope. <laughs> uh, there's the head gasket going on. Getting everything together. This was a bit um, a bit worrying because I wanted to make sure the pistons weren't going to clash. And you can see there I sprayed everything in GM corporate blue with a high temperature paint and I built myself an engine cradle. Um, well, I, I bought it from eBay and then I adapted it. I think it's for a Chevy because I couldn't buy one for a Pontiac 400. And there it is in the cradle. I've put the headers on, you can see. This is from the automatic transmission. Um, that was the old filter, pretty grim. So I put a new filter in there. I then sprayed up the Edelbrock and put the Edelbrock in. There's the emission control stuff. Uh, back to the gearbox again. I was doing both at the same time at this point. I found a few faults with the gearbox that I fixed and it's other than leaking a little bit of oil, it's fine. You can see me spraying the bolts, GM corporate blue. That's the state of things in the garage at that point. You see the Catalina and the Jag. <laughs> That's how I felt. <laughs> like I was on the production line, I wish. Okay, so I've got to break in and interrupt myself there. Um, unfortunately, my broadband is so slow that I can't upload a big video. So I've had to break this into a number of chunks. Um, I'll put a link on the screen now to the next part. And if you look in my videos, you'll see I don't have many videos. So that was part one. Thanks for watching. Um, if you click the link, you can watch part two.